I need your help. Anna! Hi, Linda. What's wrong? Mark just dumped me and kicked me out of our apartment. Please help me. Oh my god. I can't believe he would do that to you. Head over to my place. I'll leave early to let you in. Oh, thank you so much. I don't know what happened. I'm so upset. I'll bet. Just wait in my driveway. I'll be there in a bit. Thank you so much. I don't know how to repay you for this. Believe me, I'm not going to forget that you helped me when I really needed it most. And I won't stay long. I'll start looking for a place and we'll be out of your hair in a week or two. <laughs> no need for thanks. I know that you were hoping for things to go differently with him. If you need a few weeks, that's fine too. I don't expect you to find something immediately. It's a rough market. But I can help you find something that will suit your preferences. I know that it may even take up to a month, and I'm okay with that. I'll help you however I can. We can talk when I get there, though. I need to wrap something up and let my manager know that I have an emergency. Do you know how long it will take you? I'm not sure. I'm wrapping up a report, and they need that before the end of the day. If I can finish it at home, then I'll be home in about 20 minutes. If not, it'll be more like an hour. That's a pretty big range. I'm sorry, Linda. I'll let you know when I know more. Okay, thanks. If you aren't able to leave soon, I'll just hang out at a cafe for a while. Oh, I forgot to ask something. Anna, are you there? Sorry, just messaging my manager. Should know soon. Do you still have that cat? Chester? Yes, I still have him. Uh, I'm allergic to cats. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Don't worry, I'm allergic too. You can use some of my over-the-counter stuff. I find Claritin works great. I'll think about it. Sounds good. You'll let me know when you're leaving, right? As soon as I have an answer from my manager, I'll text you the details. In the meantime, there's a cafe about a quarter of a mile from my place. You can park in my driveway and walk. Or you can go there and I'll let you know when I get home. I still want to know when to expect you, though. Of course. I just meant if you go to the cafe because I have to stay here for a bit, I'll let you know so you can meet me there. Okay. I can wait then. Just don't forget to text when you know. Don't worry, I won't. Anna, are you on your way home yet? Anna, please, I need to know what to do. Sorry, Linda, but I think my manager went into a meeting, so I don't know if it's okay to work on it at home. Well, that's rude of him. You guys were messaging, then he just ghosts you? I did stop messaging him since you had some questions for me, so I guess he thought the problem was solved. Are you blaming me? What? No! I was just saying that he has a lot to do. Look, why don't you head to the cafe instead of waiting around? I'll just finish things up here. At this point, I can be finishing the report by the time he gets back to me. Well, that's not right. This is a real emergency. What if I were in the hospital? Would he expect you to just sit around waiting for him? Linda, it's going to be okay. I know that it's been really rough for you, and I'm sorry that I can't just leave. But the cafe is very calm, and it will give you a chance to relax. They even have some books if you want to get your mind off of everything. That's okay. I can just scroll through social media until you eventually get home. Okay, I'm really sorry I can't get out sooner, but I promise that as soon as I'm on my way, I'll let you know. Okay. Oh, hey, what about dinner? What do you mean? If you end up working all day, what will we do about dinner? Oh, uh, I'm not sure. Usually I grab something on the way home. Really? What should we have? Um, I haven't planned for dinner yet. If you would like something, you can pick it up while you're waiting for me. But I don't think that I'll be late. If anything, I'll probably have plenty of time to make dinner. Oh, good. At first I thought you expected me to get us dinner. <laughs> Don't worry, it shouldn't be that late when I leave. We can figure out what to do about dinner when I get home. I hope so. I don't even know what you like to eat. It will be fine. We can talk about all of that in a bit. I need to get back to work, though. The sooner I finish, the sooner I can leave. All right. I'll head to the cafe, then. Please don't forget to message me so I can get all of the stuff out of my car. Of course. I'll even help you get set up when we get home. Your cat just came into my room! Sorry, he's used to having free range in the house. 
you can carefully scoop him up and put him in the hall or the living room. Make sure to close your door and he won't be able to bother you. Can't you train him not to come into my room? <laughs> I hope you're kidding. That's rude. Of course I'm not kidding. Uh, Linda, he's a cat. And he's lived in the house for five years. When you leave, he'll be able to go into the room again. Yeah, but right now, I don't want him coming into my room. All you have to do is close the door. He's pretty good about leaving people alone when they're behind closed doors. I don't see why you can't just keep him in your room while I'm here. All of his stuff is in the living room. You can move its things into your bedroom, though. You've seen my bedroom. It's pretty small, because I left the master bedroom for guests. His cat post and stuff won't fit in my room. It seems a bit rude to expect your guests to put up with a cat just roaming into their room. Like I said, just close the door. So I'm supposed to feel trapped in the room because of a cat? Look, Linda, I have a tight deadline and I don't really have time to argue with you right now. If you don't want to deal with Chester in the guest room, just close the door. Fine, but I want to talk about this when you come home. Sure, we can talk. Because I don't think it's fair to be locked away for a cat. Like you said, we can talk when I get home. For now, just put him out of your room and close the door. I promise he isn't going to bother you. Well, I'll hear him running around out there. Sure, but you can put some headphones in or put on some music. It's not like Chester is loud. Oh, great. More things I have to do to accommodate your cat. As your roommate, I have a lot to say about this whole situation. Sure, when I get home. Make sure you don't forget. Anna! The damn cat jumped on the counters again! Linda, we've talked about this. The cat is free to jump up on whatever he wants to. Do you have any idea how dirty its paws are? That thing plays around in a litter box, then walks all over the counters! Yes. It's dragging poop and pee all over everything. Do you have any idea how disgusting that is? I clean the counters and all of the surfaces every time I cook. Ugh, it's so unhygienic. Every time you eat, you're getting that in your mouth. That's about the most disgusting thing I've ever heard. And you expect me to put up with that? You think it's okay to let guests eat food contaminated by cat feces? First, I always clean the counters before getting started making food. You haven't made any food, so you probably haven't noticed this. But there's still remnants that are disgusting. You're more than welcome to clean the countertops and make your own meals, you know? Second, you shouldn't be putting food directly on the countertops. Even without a cat, countertops have a lot of bacteria and other stuff on them. You should always use plates and other things instead of putting food directly on the countertops. Uh, if that were true, they wouldn't make the surfaces so smooth. The only reason we can't use the countertops the way they were intended is because of that stupid cat. Linda, I'm really bothered with the way you talk about my cat. He was there before you, and you will definitely still be living with me after you move out. Are you threatening to kick me out? After everything I've already been through, you're just gonna get rid of me? No, that's not what I'm saying. I know you've been through a lot, and I'm really sorry about what Mark did. Just please don't take it out on my cat. He's a good kitty, and he wants to like you. I'm allergic to cats. I get it, but that just means you should avoid him. He's my pet, so please treat him kindly or indifferently. I don't see why you can't just keep him locked up while I'm living there. Because it's his house as much as it's mine. I can't keep him locked in a room all of the time. But you expect me to be locked in a room? Thanks for letting me know where your priorities are. Chester was there before you, Linda. If you really don't like living with me and Chester, I'm sure your mother would let you move in with her. Are you kidding me right now? You're giving me an ultimatum if I don't play nice with a cat? I'm simply offering solutions for the problem. You really don't seem to like my cat. Should be really easy for you to ignore him, but if he really bothers you, then my place isn't going to be the best place for you. I can't believe you would choose your cat over a friend in need. That's just cold. I'm not choosing anyone. I've told you what you can do to avoid Chester. I've been told you can take some of my medication to keep from having an allergic reaction too. I don't want to have 
have to take medicine every day? Do you know what that does to a person's health? It will only get worse. I'm sorry, Linda, but I'm currently at work and really do not have time for this. I have to work. It's up to you if you want to stay or leave, but if you want to stay, that means accepting that you will have to find some kind of harmony living with my cat. Unbelievable. I'm sorry you feel that way, but I've had him since he was a kitten. That's more than seven years. But I'm a person. I should be more important. We will talk when I get home. That is what you always say. Then you go back to sticking up for the damn cat. I do not appreciate the way you're talking about my pet. You're a guest in my home. He's not. Please show some respect to my feelings. You aren't showing any respect for mine. I have, but you refuse to listen to any of my suggestions. If Chester really upsets you, I can help you look for a different place to live. But right now, I need to get back to work. Fine. But this time, please don't keep telling me that I have to deal with it. Hi, Mom. Just wanted to follow up with you about the visit to the vet. Oh, how's little Chester doing? They didn't find anything wrong with him besides a few cuts and scratches. Since he's gotten a little bit skittish lately, I think he's been bumping into things and hurting himself. What has happened to him? Why would he be suddenly clumsy? Are they doing blood work to see if it's early signs of something else? Nothing like that. Since there's someone new in the house, the vet thought that Chess was probably just having trouble adjusting. Cats don't tend to adjust very easily. Remember how he was when you visited for a couple of weeks? <laughs> yes, he pretty much stayed hidden for that first week. If I didn't hear him running up and down the hall, I wouldn't have believed that you had a cat. <laughs> and I'll bet he knows that Linda isn't exactly a fan of his. Linda doesn't like Chester? That must be it then, poor boy. I can't imagine what it would be like to have someone living in my home and constantly complaining about me. I've had to talk to her a lot since she moved in, but I think she finally understands that Chester is a part of my family. Damn straight he is. What has she been complaining about? She doesn't like him coming up into her room, jumping on the counters, trying to cuddle with her. Generally anything that is cat behavior. She doesn't have to live with you. I told her that, but she took it as me trying to kick her out of the house instead of suggesting that she can find a new place. Did you give her a timeline to move out? No, but I was considering it if she kept up the way she was acting. Seems things have settled down, though. Poor Chester. I wish I lived closer because I would love to let him stay with me for a while. <laughs> nice try, Mom, but he's mine. You're always free to visit, you know. Maybe I'll do that. I'll pamper that little boy until he forgets that there are people who don't care for cats out there. You mean you'll spoil him? Of course. That's what grandmothers do. <laughs> I'm sure Chester would appreciate the sentiment, but I doubt he'd be able to show it since he prefers to act aloof. I'll just have to bribe him with more catnip then. <laughs> well, that was the update. He's fine, so you can stop worrying about him. Thank goodness. Have a lovely day, dear. Remember I love you and Chester. We love you too, Mom. Hi, Linda. Just wanted to give you a heads up that I need to go out of town for a few days next week. Really? Do you have a vacation or something? Will you be taking the cat? Um, no. It's a work trip, and I won't be able to bring Chester with me. But I'll bring you back something if you'll give him food and water while I'm away. You expect me to take care of the cat while you're gone? It's a two-day event. And they have asked me to stay an extra day for another conference. Can't you get a cat sitter or something? Well, you're already there. I promise it won't take too much. I'm not asking you to take care of the cat litter or anything. Just make sure that he has water and feed him twice a day. I knew this would happen. Now that I don't complain about the stupid thing, you want me to start helping take care of it? It's only while I'm gone. As soon as I return, then you can go back to ignoring him again. I don't see how you can expect a guest to do work for you. Well, if you really don't want to watch him, I can see if someone else will, but I'll probably start charging you rent. What? Are you kidding me? No, you've already stayed longer than either of us thought. You haven't helped around the place at all, and when it suits you, you call yourself a roommate. When I ask for help, you say you're a guest. If you are a guest, we need to set a date for you to leave. If you're a roommate, you need to start paying to be there. 
OMG, I can't even believe you right now. This is so heartless and cruel. I just got dumped and you're already acting like I'm the problem here? It's been over a month, Linda. I thought that you would stay until you found your own place. I didn't realize that you were going to move in permanently. Either way, we need to determine if you're going to live there long term or move out. I'm not telling you that you have to go. I'm not here permanently, but it's taking a while to find a place. When was the last time you looked at places? A couple of weeks, because I've been so busy with everything else. Well, I don't mind you living there, but you need to start helping out since it is taking so long. I'm so glad you decided to change your mind. So much for doing whatever to help me. I don't mind helping you, but right now it feels more like you're taking advantage of me. You haven't helped with the chores, you aren't working, and you aren't looking for a new place. It's starting to feel like you're just using me. Uh, I don't know how you could even say that. But fine, if that's what my friendship is worth, I'll move out. Don't let me crimp your crazy cat lady lifestyle. I'm sorry, Linda. I'm not trying to pick a fight or to suggest that you need to leave. But we have been arguing a lot. And now that I'm actually asking you for something, you're acting like it's the hardest thing in the world. You know that I hate that cat. How can you even ask me to take care of it? You don't have to interact with the cat. It's just pouring water into his bowl a couple of times and putting food in his bowl. Don't you have work to do? Fine, I'll get back to work. But we do need to have another serious conversation. I swear you're just as bad as Mark. It's like I can't do anything right. We'll talk later. Whatever. Hello? This is the Springfield Animal Shelter. This is the cell phone number associated with a chipped cat dropped off today. Please contact us at your earliest convenience. I'm sorry, but I'm in the middle of a conference and can't call for a few minutes. What's wrong? Has something happened to Chester? He's fine, but a woman dropped him off a bit ago, saying she found him wandering around nearby. Nearby in Springfield? I don't know how that's possible. I live in Hampton, and I just left home a few hours ago. Is it even possible for a cat to go over 60 miles in that amount of time? Mm, it doesn't sound likely. He's been checked out, though, and it really doesn't look like he's been outside. His fur is clean, and there's no dirt on him. He does have some scabs, though. Give me a few minutes. I'm gonna see if I can get out of here and come pick him up. Okay. It's a good thing you had him chipped. Yes, it really is. Thank you so much for taking care of him. I'll be there as soon as I can. Please don't put him up. I love my cat and have no idea how he got out of my home. Do you have a cat carrier? Yes, it's blue with little stars on the outside. Why? Because he was brought in here in a cat carrier. A blue one with stars on it. <sighs> I think I know what happened. I'll be there as soon as I can. Okay, see you soon. Thank you so much. You call the cops on my daughter? Your daughter tried to get rid of my cat. Of course I called the police. What she did was stealing. It was just a damn cat. You put that before your friend, who's going through something horrible right now? You're such a heartless... I would argue that the person who got a free room and board for over a month, then decides to take the host's cat to an animal shelter, is the problem. But talking to you, it's very obvious where she gets her entitled beliefs from. <gasps> How dare you! Very easily. What she did was a huge breach of trust. And I will always view it as a betrayal. You can come get her stuff off the front lawn anytime today. If you don't take it, the trash man will haul it off tomorrow. You're such a horrible creature! I can't believe that my daughter ever thought of you as a friend! I can't believe you claim to be my friend, then call the cops on me! You're such a horrible person! I invited you into my home, and you got rid of my cat. At least I took it to a shelter. It's not like I killed it. And you got the damn thing back, so why are you being so hostile? All of your stuff is on the sidewalk next to the street. Make sure you get it before they pick up the trash tomorrow morning. You put my stuff out with the trash? Even Mark didn't do that to me! That's because he burned it. What? I called him and found out why he dumped you and kicked you out. Wish I had done that sooner. You know he's a liar! Yet you went behind my back and talked to my horrible, abusive ex? Well, according to the police reports, you were the abusive one. 
If I had realized what you were doing to him and his dogs, I never would have let you into my house. How can you believe him over your friend? Because he had proof of you poisoning his dogs. Considering what you did to my cat, I know he's not the liar. All I did was give your cat a place to stay while you were away. You know that I'm allergic to that thing. Why do you think it's all right to torture me? Chester has an anxiety problem. Something you made worse. I didn't want him to be taken somewhere else. Well, why was it my responsibility to take care of it? I hate cats. Then you should have turned down my offer to live at my house. My cat is a permanent resident. You are not. How can you prioritize a cat over me? I have allergies. And I hate those big dumb animals looking at me like I should give it any attention. Funny, I think I'm allergic to you. And I've learned that I hate your entitled attitude. <laughs> You're unbelievable. There's an easy solution. Never contact me again. In fact, I'll have an order in place in the near future that will ensure you can no longer contact me. You have to drop the charges. Combined with what Mark is doing, I'm actually going to have to spend time in jail. Consider it karma. You put Chester in a type of prison. But unlike Chester, you aren't innocent. You're the worst! Keep that in mind and never contact me again. After picking up Chester, Anna called the police and told them about what had happened. While there wouldn't have been much that she could have done against Linda, her former friend made sure the police would take care of her by attacking them when they showed up at the house. Apparently, she had a long story lined up about how the cat had gotten out, but when the police appeared, she realized that Anna knew what had happened. She spent three nights in jail for assaulting two police officers. Anna had no idea if her former friend's things were picked up by Alice or the garbage men, but she didn't care. Chester was pretty traumatized by Linda living in his house, and Anna had to give him some extra care and attention. Her mother did come to visit, even bringing some extra catnip. The last Anna heard, Linda was given a few months in jail and a $10,000 fine. Anna had a restraining order put out against her former friend, so when Linda contacted her, the former friend ended up getting a longer jail sentence for breaking the order. After that, she focused on making sure Chester was treated well and once again felt comfortable in his own home. 